Gentlemen, this is the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm excited and delighted to be with you guys again today for another amazing episode. Really looking forward to this episode. I'm going to try to hurry up and breeze through the announcements right quick, and I may talk about them again at the end just for a little bit more detail, just because I only have my guest here for uh, right at an hour. So I just want to let everybody know um, I'm thankful for all of the support via Patreon, everybody who believes in my work. If you would like to support, go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker there you get access to my entire discography uh guided meditations thursday night school of the mystics which is tonight by the way if you're listening to this live uh shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so shout out to monica underwood uh keith what up brother thank you man and uh, phoenix rose thank you guys for believing in the work coming on you know what we do thanks so much it this is a listener supported funded show doesn't exist without your help Thank you for the support. Um, also, too, just really quick, I want to talk about um, I'm going to now be a part of the uh, Florida Immersion Retreat that uh, Gil, Gil and Adina Hodges are putting together. So with uh, Ecclesia Arising, Kingdom Talks and uh, all that good stuff. So if you want to be a part of that, um, I'll have all that info on my Facebook. I'll share it out. Um, really beautiful place that they have rented. They're going to be doing some uh, um, um immersions and um i call them guided meditations there's many different ways to uh talk about it but ascensions and things like that and really just growing together in the body so if you're looking to meet and you're in the orlando florida area you would like to meet up uh the tickets will be available for that also too we have our men's retreat coming up in april um as well for those who are wanting to get up with me here in mobile alabama a cabin in the woods anyway all that stuff's at my website truthseeker.com book is out there all that cool stuff we're going to go ahead and jump into today's episode i'm excited to talk to my guests today um and if i could uh just kind of give the reasons why a few reasons kind of going into this um because i was first turned on to his work by uh looking up interviews of like some christian mystics back in the day when i was working on a lot of music uh i would try to find interview excerpts and clips and things like that to to weave throughout my music about what i was talking about and i was watching some ian clayton uh interviews and uh sampled it and uh have a uh it was actually my song gateway to the seer realm i've got ian clayton at the beginning we recently did the video and i got the clip from this video um and it's been out for a couple of years now. And then so my um, someone commented on, on my video. I believe it was the Kundalini video. I'm not sure what video it mm-hmm. was, but the name looked familiar. <laughs> and so I clicked the link to see who it was. And it was the page that I got the interview from. And I was like, oh, this is familiar. So I looked at it and I said, oh, wow, I'm using some of his footage. So I was like, hey, man, check out this this uh, this clip. And he checked it out. He was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. I like what you're doing. And he's interviewed so many people. And it was really cool. Just the synchronicities that kind of lined up. For it was this, great timing. It was good yeah, timing. Just to, to, to transpire. But, I mean, um, and I've watched a lot of your interviews. I wanted to talk to you because – You've interviewed so many people from so many different walks of life. Mm-hmm. And I think that at the end of the day, there's a wisdom that comes with that. Like mm-hmm. uh, like you get to kind of 
spread everything out of all these belief systems, of all these doctrines, of spirituality, of the, or the lack of, and kind of see what these people believe, test the fruit, and see yeah. what makes sense, and then pick from the good and apply it to your life. That's kind exactly. of like something that organically happens. It happens. Well, that's what you're. That's what you're doing with your podcast in a lot of ways. It's, exactly. It's you're you're open to talking about any kind of belief system. From what I've seen, you've talked about everything from reincarnation to. Uh, just a, a classic charismatic uh, faith healing kind of thing, and and you're you're open to discussion with the with all these people. It's great. I know, man. And, and um, from that from that, you kind of find you're able to kind of discern what's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So My, it's, from from experience, man. Um, I listened to a lot of coast to coast AM over the years when I was driving, and there's a lot of far out. Right. Like I said people would call in and say, "Hey, man, I feel like the moon is moving, or the moon opened up, and <laughs> yeah. people came out of it." You just hear this yeah. far out stuff, and he's exactly. like, "Okay, tell me more." And he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's genuinely in, intrigued. It doesn't mean he believes he believes these people, but he's open to the conversation. It's it's without judgment and cur- and with a lot of curiosity as to what they're what they're thinking, what they're talking about, yeah, and, and how they experience what they would feel God to be or, or the the universe or however you want to look at it. The paranormal Um, spiritual. Exactly. Um, I want I want to name off just a list of some of these people that stood out to me. Now there's other people, but as far as like some of the people that you've interviewed over the years and with many of these charismatic uh, leaders, you were mm-hmm. kind of with them at the forefront of their breakout, the you know, right. the Lakeland revival, Todd Bentley and in, mm-hmm. in his conception of being what he is now, we'll say that or or has come to be. But I'm going to give yeah. a, just a quick list just to go over this right quick so just so people get a context of what you do so you interview people or you have interviewed people over the years <clears throat> ranging from todd bentley jason mm-hmm. upton john crowder bill johnson sean bowles patricia king bobby connor mm-hmm. bob jones ian clayton jonathan david hessler and so many more but these are some yeah. of like the big names and and they've all gone on to do yeah like they've gone they've kind of moved things. on to even greater things yeah exactly yeah. you know, they're at the yeah. forefront uh roy peterson welcome to the truth seeker podcast my friend hey thanks for having me I'm I'm excited. It's been it's been a while since I've interviewed somebody um, <clears throat> um, in the charismatic world, simply because I kind of left that world for a while. Um, and once you kind of leave that world, it's like, oh, <laughs> I, we don't want to interview with you, Roy. You know, you you've got some crazy videos up there. Um, but yeah, th- those are. Uh, I just re- you know a lot of interviews came from like the 2005 to the 2010. Or twelve, kind of era. That's some as early as two thousand and seven. I seen. I think it was Patricia King two thousand and seven. Yeah, there was Patricia King and Bobby Connor. Bobby Connor was like two thousand five, two thousand six. I remember seeing Bob- Bobby Connor two thousand and one. Like that's how that's how far I go back to the prophetic movement and, and the school yeah, of no, the prophets and things like that. But the film is uh, Bobby Connor seasons my esophagus. That's the film. I titled the film, and we basically kind of. It's not well shot at all, and that's what kind of. <clears throat> I'm a, the sound isn't that great, but <clears throat> it's Bobby uh, going out on the street in Bath in the UK and witnessing, giving prophetic words to to these kids, and it's really touching. So, and and in the video, he kind of sees into my stomach and esophagus and. That makes sense now because I had a gallbladder problem, and he was—I kind of, think he was seeing that. Yeah. Um, I want to. Yeah. I want. I want to like uh, zoom in on on some of these not leaders, but but the movements that they were sure. involved with, and what it, what this kind. You've been involved. You've been there. I want to zoom in on each of these a little bit. But mm-hmm. right now, I just kind of want to get where your head is. If we just kind of gave this background <laughs> of all of the stuff you've been a part of. Um, for me, I was in, in that and then I came out of the charismatic stuff because it was too crazy. They just let anything fly. There was so many different things, especially when I got deeper into the scriptures. I'm like, what the, what the hell are we entertaining? What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so yeah, that, I, that's the question I asked myself a lot. I got into what the, what the hell are we doing? What the hell are we doing? I got into the messianic Judaism. And so it was <laughs> okay. more of a peaceful, I, I described it as the the power of a charismatic revival, just in the stillness and in a mm. peace of of let's light some candles, let's pray, let's say a prayer, let's do devotion unto God. So it was as the power of the Spirit was that strong, but just in a small devoted way, and it changed everything for me, and it opened up a lot. 
I got into that and that spread into other things. Eventually, Hebrew Israelites, eventually to kind of come full circle about 10, 15 years later to where I am now. I feel like more balanced and well-rounded. That's where I went in my circle. Where did you okay. go from Charismania <laughs> and starting there to where you are I, now? Yeah, no, I went through Charismania. I was there, you know, um, Lakelands. When the Lakeland revival broke out in 2008, I was so on fire. Um, and it was literally, I'm going to pick up a camera. I'm going to try to get a documentary of what's happening here. Because I saw in Todd and the people on the stage, I saw real people. I saw part rock star, part evangelist, but they were real. And I had to do that. So I was being so on fire that taking going through that movie and filming for six months and then filming another time when Todd came back into ministry because my first trip was going to be a two-week trip to uh, get some interviews talk to Roy Fields who's a worship leader at, at the time and Roy gave me some interviews and then in trying to find Todd we realized Todd was kind of not there he had kind of checked out in that first three months, I got some incredible stuff. So I went from a two-week trip to like a two-month trip where I was in the States. I went to Morningstar to film. I interviewed Rick Joyner and really great. My heroes of the faith, these guys have always been that. Um, but underneath all of it, when, when it, it seemed that Todd was just gone, there didn't seem to be the fire that there was in, in, in the when, excitement. Like when, like when was that? Like after his fall or? July like is when back? he started. July is when he had a difficulty, uh, I think, w w with his marriage. And that kind of blew, broke apart. And then he, he made some appearances when I was there in, in July and um, into August. And and it was gone in August. Uh, it was gone in August. So it, it kind of left this tent that was this massive, you know, 10,000 member audience that was filled every night. And then when it got into the, and that was like May, April, May, June of 2008. And then August hits and it's, it's, it's just not that. And, and I started to question like what, there was such a power of God and such a presence of God in the early days of that movement, it was extraordinary. And the stories of people kind of coming together and helping each other out. And it became more of a, of a church than it was a movement. And when it all fell apart, just because of one guy's difficulties, I, I just like, what, where's the foundation in that? Where's if, if you can just, if, Underneath this movement is just one guy's charismatic personality. Then where where is the real power of God and where's the truth? Um, and that's what set me off into into going into deeper stuff. And and um, from there it went to kind of Ian Clayton, um, really following Ian Clayton, who was good enough to give me a bunch of interviews and, and we went to New Zealand to interview him. It was, it was great. It just became all these different teachings and all these different ways to get to God. And I got lost. You know, I, I was like, do I take 10 steps to get into the cross every time I pray? And do I visualize? Cause one of Ian's teaching was to kind of step through into the cross and into the courtrooms and there are like 99 courtrooms and then you have to go through each one. And then you have to go through these various, like, you know, steps to get to God. And I'm like, Kabbalistic already, sounding as well. Right. It, it was, it's very old Testament and very accurate to the old Testament. They, 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 they study this stuff, whether it be the concepts of like the bench of three, where you have to have three people in agreement on any decision that you make. That's, that's got to do with the church yeah. or family. And, I mean, it is it is down to the detail as to how much the stuff. It, it definitely is in the Bible. I'm not arguing that at all. It's just in the practice of it, 
where do you go with it? <laughs> like, like how many courtrooms do you have to go through before you become a son of God? How many, th- there were things about that movement that was just, I just didn't, I couldn't get it. And, and the whole thing with, um, there was a thing about essential oils that they were doing and people Barthrop. were start. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- I don't know if it was Barthrop, but, but uh, he and, started snorting them and stuff. Like he, he actually, well, yeah, had that, own, I, I guess that's the brand. <laughs> I guess that's the logical progression of where you go. Um, but people would start with the frankincense at the conference. And I'm not talking about Ian doing this. I'm talking about the followers of Ian. And yeah. you'd put the frankincense here and then you'd, you'd open yourself up to, to, to get that. And it was like, okay, yeah, this is interesting. But it didn't so much resonate. Um, it's like, how do you live this? Yeah. Uh, and, and you can live it in conferences. You can go from conference oh, wow. to conference. You can, but it's, it's like, where... Where do you go to the to get if if Ian is opening the door to these things for for us? Then how do you live that day to day? And there was really no answer. It was just go to the next conference. Yeah, it was just like listen to Ian's teachings. Oh yeah, that was that was us for for, for like the prophetic uh, movement back in the day because we like every weekend we had the school of the prophets or. Um, and uh, it was some really big prophetic people. And then they would let these Bobby Connors and all these other people come in and teach and for the weekend. Mm-hmm. And, and it, that's what we lived for, for like church service, for meeting the meeting. And people would be like, why are you like always seeking a word? Like how many <coughs> prophet? And like now I've done shows like how many words do you need? How many prophetic utterances do you, you in the scriptures? They took one and ran with it. They were right. changed forever. Like they one word book from the Lord. Yeah, I hope you know just one word would be a would be but like the old at, at these conferences. You want a lot of words. You want one word at the beginning, and one word at the end, then you want another word next week, and then you want another word, and you want somebody to prophesy, somebody it's to pray. Always that, it, and and it became like my favorite. To this day, I have really good. Um, there was good fruit from Morningstar. I, I enjoyed Morningstar a lot, and they would have prophecy booths. You know, you'd go after the. Mm. You'd line up and you'd go into the prophecy booth and three or four people would prophesy over you. And they were always encouraging. You know, I, I had the, you know, I still move in the prophetic gift, but I was once known as prophecy Roy. You know, I would give prophetic words and some of them were like incredibly accurate, I, like beyond my understanding of how I could say, if, I, if someone come, come up to me, I'd say in six months, you will be doing this and, and going into great detail. And that person six months later is saying, how did you, you know, that was God. So I understand there's power in the prophetic. There really is. Um, and it's it can be exciting, but it also it can be very addicting and you can lose touch with reality yeah. really easily. Well, the, uh, the there was one uh, Christian International out of Destin, which is close to us. I never mm-hmm. went, but that was the next thing for our movement because a lot of people started going there because they started doing the prophecy booth thing, come in and, and we let – People like people prophesy over you. You can get a room and and, and a recording. You know, you record right. it, give it to them. But like, I started getting a little iffy because I knew that um, that I knew people who were smoking crack all throughout the week and selling mm. their belongings and pawning mm-hmm. their car to drug dealers for a week to smoke crack. And then they would be like, "Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to prophesy this <clears> weekend." They're letting me. I'm like, "You've been smoking crack all week, and you're going to right. prophesy on Friday and Saturday? Really? Right. These people even know who they letting?" I'm I'm oh, one of wow. That shows the power of the gift that the, the gift is without, you know, you, you don't need to repent to have the gift. You, you have the gift. God's given you the gift. But mm. when it, when you're mixing in that kind of life, it's yeah. like, Oh, just, that's a little bit messed up. Cause you don't know where people are trying to appeal. Are they trying to appeal to your ego when they prophesy? I, I guilty of that. Hey, if I can prophesy to somebody famous, you know, Hey, I can move my ministry up a level. That, that's kind of the mentality. It's almost like um, opportunist, yeah, and, and opportunist, Steve. opportunist, and yeah. and you know, I I can understand that. No, let me let me ask <coughs> let me ask you this: did, did you ever see anything weird? I, I know you interviewed, and it's not to throw anybody off the bus because I think that these people represent a movement and represent a, a mentality. They're just kind of like mm-hmm. the, the notable people. Sean Bowles, even like what he does is like getting these addresses and these names and stuff like that. And I will say. Just as a skeptic, I think you need to approach all of this stuff with a healthy skepticism. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter Popoff, 
you know, had an earbud in and they, people right. would fill out cards and say, yeah, I need prayer for my lower back. My name is this. This is my address, my phone number. I need yeah. a miracle. And Peter Popoff's wife was, you know, sending him messages uh, reading the prayer cards and they would yeah. read the addresses 7619 yeah. 7619 Peterson Lane who is it oh it's you right. you're back yeah, yeah, yeah. you're back I, and I've so they it. would do that so uh, Sean Bowles is, was doing some stuff that's similar and I've been into conferences where it's like come on now this people's getting all the names of their whole family and they're just running up one at a time who is so and so who is this who is that and it's like it was a show and it's like being in the it's, prophetic it's, you want it mm-hmm. to be real you want it to be real and and people fake miracles and fake the prophetic because it builds the faith of the people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Have you seen anything like that where you knew it was like, hold on, man, these people are. I've, uh, I've experienced things where um, uh, before Lakeland, Todd Bentley, I was at an unregistered conference. It was a free night. Nobody knew my name or why I was there. It was like 600 people. He called Peterson, Roy Peter, uh, and I got prophesied to, and it was awesome. It was very, very powerful. I've seen the prophetic only in positive things. I have never seen, I understand that there are like um, darker sides to that movement in terms of like Peter Popoff and whoever, but um, I mean, you've never, you've never like caught I've never anybody playing? No, 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 no. Okay. I've never. I've never seen that, to be honest. I've only seen really powerful stuff. My my beef with it is that it becomes just a rock show. It, it becomes just a concert. A conference just becomes a place where you go to see Sean Belts or you go to see Todd. And there, there's not a sense of that, hey, I, we can prophesy like this too. We can We can make this real in our lives. Um, Sean Belts, I interviewed him several times, and he's always been the kindest. You know, I've interviewed a lot of people in the charismatic world, and very few will, even on second or third interviews, would acknowledge, hey, thanks for doing this. This is awesome. Sean Belts has always had the greatest character, and, mm-hmm. and it was, and I've been to his church before. It was really good. And, and so I have a high respect for the guy. Um, and, and, but it's not, it's not the particular speaker. Even Todd, I mean, I still admire the guy because he goes out there and he, he he heals the sick and he has the faith and takes the steps to do that kind of stuff where very few people do. But it's it's the whole system of how you go from conference to conference, how you kind of lift these people up as rock stars and as uh, greater, larger than life figures when they're really not. They're really just normal people with issues that we all have. Now, who do you see that is working <clears throat> to make that known? I feel like a lot of Todd White stuff now, he's like, I'm not going to lay hands on you. We got a team here. You know, people are just want Todd White to pray for them. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> that kind of thing. And if the pastor or if his brother prays for you, it's not as good. It's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like Todd White and a lot of stuff I hear, he's trying to like, even though he's up from that, I feel like he's trying to work a little bit to undo some of that. Yeah, and, and there's something of his ministry that he just goes out into the street and talks to people and, and just lets them know makes it God loves them and makes it – yeah, that, that's great. I, I still think, though, for me, I'm still um, – I am not doing another conference. I'm not going to another conference. That's kind of like – I don't I watch. I'll end up going to another conference. What about a retreat? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, same thing. Oh, I've done a lot of retreats. <laughs> um, it's just I cannot participate in that system. I'm being. I'm, maybe I'm protesting it. Yeah. I'm just. I, I, maybe I got so burned out. You know, I've got the yeah. the T-shirt from lots of conferences and lots of <laughs> retreats, and yeah. I, I've the Eye of God, the Advanced Prophetic, the Super Advanced Prophetic, the the, you know, I've got the certificate to, to all these things, and I don't. I still don't see where it translates to a daily, a daily practical how to make this yeah. stuff real. And the question, and I question then how real is the stuff? Yeah. When, when prophets and prophecies, if you look back, there, you know, Bob Jones. I love Bob Jones, but I interviewed him in two thousand. Nine and he was like 2012 is going to be the year of the harvest 
it's on my website still. It's on the YouTube. Yeah, I just watched it. <clears throat> yeah, and the fish cleaners or the, the harvest and the fish cleaners. Well, you know, are... his prophecy just came to pass, though, that the Chiefs would. No, win. yeah, that's interesting stuff. It's and, and also, John Paul Jackson had prophecies in the 80s about. I feel like he's more around it. I think they've kind of like really left his stuff behind with some of the let's go into the heavens and fight demons. And he's like, hey, don't do that. You know what I'm it's saying? Tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where you get into. That's where, where it gets tricky. Yeah. Like when you're starting to do that and go into different realms. And oh, man. I, but the, the other <coughs> point of this is that once I once I, I came to the end of Lakeland in the middle of trying to finish this film that isn't Christian enough for Christians because Todd was so controversial back then, even for God TV. Um, so God TV wasn't interested in it. The people that I was filming with wasn't interested in it because I, I kind of filmed people that were not kind of, um, were not acceptable to them and, and didn't reflect their ministries as much as, as they would have liked. Um, and it was the film itself was not as controversial because I didn't want to throw anybody under the bus. I didn't want to ex- expose Todd yeah. or Roy or anybody. So I, I purposely left things that, you know, could have made money, <laughs> you know, quotes and things that we caught on camera could have been a, a more mainstream secular underground film. And I, I took them out. Oh. And so it was play, trying to just be right on the line of this is what happened. This is what these people claim. This is what people cl- claim wasn't happening. So I tried to walk this line. And in the end, neither camp really wanted to see the film or sponsor the film or bless the film. Now, is this the, is this, is this the Lakeland one or is this something else? This is Lakeland. This, is, so- this was after working with Morningstar, Fresh Fire, and... Um, which you put out, church. which you ended up putting out on YouTube, which right now it seems to be right. the largest video, like 260,000 views at this point. It's, it's huge in terms a of a lot of dislikes as <coughs> a lot of heresy hunters yeah, are drawn oh, man, to that they, film. They are. And, and I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not a heresy hunter. I, yeah. I used to like in the early nineties, I was a heresy hunter. I liked the Bible answer man for about a year, but I'm not a heresy hunter, but it seems like, Heresy hunters love. Todd attracts them. The film attracts them. I'm glad that that. Uh, That's a good documentary, people, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you, and and, and I'm happy that that the three year process and the twenty thousand pounds it cost to make is actually people are actually seeing it. I, I like that the the average view time is over twenty minutes, so it's like a ninety minute doc, and people are starting to, or or sit there and watch it. Yeah. Whether, whatever they feel about it, that's that's their thing. Um, I I just think that in that process of making the film and um, getting to see Todd's restoration and and seeing still the issues around that, I was left with this empty. Oh, my heroes are not my heroes. My <laughs> my idols have been. Uh, well, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, you know what I'm saying, the Wizard of Oz. Like when you finally get there, exactly. we're meeting the <laughs> wizard, like, the yeah, wizard. This like, little old man is like, "Hey, I'm yeah, just a trickster, like, hey, man." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and Todd is a little bit of a trickster in a good way. Yeah, and that's why I think he he still goes today, and he still attracts conference controversy. But more power to him because I think almost that's part of his calling in a way. It, it, it's it sells it's sold the controversy yeah. you know but, but it's just but, like finding the right strain to where you can get the christian majority with you you know versus uh, and and also not cause harm to people yeah not car- not cause damage to people's lives the, in that it's a fine line <laughs> the weird thing for me uh, about the todd bentley thing because a, a few years before lakeland um i had found random videos i had no idea who he was but seeing a video of him in africa praying for children and there's all these african children and they're shaking under the power of god and here's this little overweight older up in age middle-aged man no tattoos Mm -hmm. no piercings he's wearing a suit and he's you know he's praying and he's speaking the word and i was like wow this is powerful and then um 
you know, five years, six years later, you see him covered from head to toe in tattoo, right? Wearing, uh, uh, tattoos, wearing affliction shirts, yeah. jeans, and you know, Pierced and, 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 and re- rings, yeah. and it's like wow, he's like uh, trying to appeal to the youth, almost like Damon Thompson when he went to the mm-hmm. ramp. I don't know if you kind of followed that deal. Mm-hmm. He got tatted up and dreadlocks, and you know all that stuff when there was in in the youth movement or whatever. Some like conservative guy who just like dives in and tries to look the part. And yep. um, that kind of thing. But that was interesting to see. And I was kind of a heresy hunter when Ty Bentley first came on the scene okay. with, with Lakeland. Like mm-hmm. my, my, the dude who led me to the Lord, they're super into the supernatural. And uh, I was like, you got to watch this guy. He's kicking people and they received the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. he's kicking them and they get healed. And I was like, man, I don't want to see that, bro. Show me that mm-hmm. in the scripture. You know, I'm, that's the kind of person I was <clears throat> at the time. I've come around to like just be able to appreciate some well, of it, I guess. That, that, that brings up a whole thing where I, there was a palpable feeling you would walk into Lakeland or Todd would start to minister, and the presence of God was so strong. And the legends that happened, which I missed in the, in the film, the legends of those first few, few weeks where literally the doors would open to the church and people would, it, it would knock people down. Those kind of things were very real. Um, and, 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 how to maintain that and how to walk in that, I don't know, but it, it didn't happen past a certain point. But it is possible. And maybe it has to do with your life and how you live your life and your simplicity of faith with God. But there is that possibility that there can be um there can be that uh way to move in that kind of power and and uh maintain it. Uh that's that's it has not I've not seen it happen, but it's possible. Yeah. Um, what about my, Tom my White, thing, though? Do you think he's maintained it pretty good? He's I, got I a, don't. A church uh, and a like I said, I'm not part of that. Yeah. I'm not part of the system. Although I know friends who are, who really uh, love the guy's ministry and, and yeah. are all about that. I, I just don't know. Um, I still uh, lean on like, well, why does it have to be one person? Why can't it be a group of people? Why can't there be? There's not enough um, money. To go. There's not enough money. There's not enough promo. I mean, that's the whole thing with like with the fringe. I've talked about this many times. The people who are, I think on on the fringe, on the outskirts of some of the weird mystical Christianity, I feel like, and I think I'm out there w- with that for for a lot of most a huge part um you would think that these people would come together like reaching out to brandon barthrop reaching out to john crowder todd yeah. bentley or whoever some almost the rejects. everybody's in their own camps and, exactly. and each camp and is they against war. so crowd yeah crowder is against uh clayton and even though yep. they, they were together for a while and then the the whole thing i could i mean I, yeah I they are stuff, no like, they are when, like, when, whenever you bring up another minister's stuff they're they're going to shoot it down stay away from them this is the and only it keeps thing everybody in their own camp even even lately with the whole another top entry top penalty controversy yeah there was this apostolic apostol, apostolic council, council review and that generated enough controversy i'm like there's got to be a way to do this differently that doesn't cause this kind of um, craziness and weirdness and just honors the gospel a little bit better, a little bit more and, and doesn't. Yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. And, and that's the heart of my search is that leaving like all the Lakeland thing, the results and the fruit of Lakeland and, and having a film that nobody was watching at that time. I, I turned, I, I found a, I, I needed some counseling to work through the stuff. And I found a counselor who four weeks in was a, a Buddhist. She, she practiced Buddhism. And when I explained, we just did a session where I talked about my faith and she was like, <laughs> she was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and one of the problems that I was having was I was hung up on a prophetic dream. I had, I had a prophetic dream that was so clear that, um, was a career dream and and a vocation dream. And it was like, God was going to do this and it didn't happen. And when I explained that to her, she's like, we Buddhists have this, have a saying, do you, did you have the dream or did, does the dream have you? And, and it was just that moment that brought me out of all that stuff. And, and I explored Zen and I still do. I I love like uh, (laughs) the simplicity of Zen Buddhism I love like Thomas Merton uh, and the Catholic mystics, 
those are things that for me saved my life in, in many ways. It, it brought back a balance and a tranquility into my walk with God, into my walk with other people where other people did not went from, I've got to prophesy over that person. I've got to get that person saved. That person's on their way to hell yeah. to <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same place as this person. It brought equilibrium. It brought an equality to me and other people where I was not above them or below them. I, they were just, <laughs> they just are. And that's what I love about the Zen. What I love about the Catholic mystics, it, it brought sanity to, to my walk and to my life when a lot of insanity was going on. Let me ask you this, because we look at what Christianity is today. And then we look at like <clears throat> the, the Bible and it's totally different, right? It's, this is a new religion. It's whether it's Pauline Christianity or something totally different. Mm -hmm. We, we long, at least I long for the, what they had. Um, do you, and so you're looking at the Catholic mystics and I'm, I'm getting into some, some interesting stuff that I'm finding about mm -hmm. different ways to pray and things like that. And the mystics with the Catholic mystics, was it, a, was it different back then with some of the mystics to, to where like going to mass now and stuff? Because like it just, I don't see, and that's why I wanted to ask you, like, is it is doesn't the, always translate into uh, is it, a mass. Is it, is it mystical? Uh, is it like is it is it a mystical experience with with the creator versus like a religious <clears throat> duty come I here? found it personally I found it to be a mystical experience taking uh communion the Eucharist mm -hmm. at a Catholic church I found the presence of God very strong in in the actual ritual but I'm not I can't say that for everybody yeah not everybody has that experience and it yeah. is a personal thing it becomes a personal thing and less of a collective, let's go up and experience the presence of God through the Eucharist. It's a different kind of organization, a different way of yeah. looking at it. So, yes, I, I experienced, um, I'm, I'm no longer Catholic per se, because I have problems with the, <laughs> the institution of the church. <laughs> um, not so much the people, but I, I, I loved that. It was um, the, the Catholic church I went to was a African-American Catholic church. And to see hundreds of people just go up who were not deemed as like these hyper spiritual people and go up <laughs> and receive communion and wash each other's feet, that, that there's something very grounding and powerful about that. So it, it, it helped me get through the kind of flight, more flighty, charismatic stuff. Um, it, it brought it down to reality, like this reality um, is happening now. It's not out there. It's in the cross. It's in the blood. I, I, I'm, I feed from that. I, I, I learn from that. Yeah, I think um, as far as like a similarity for me, again, going back to like the, uh, you know what I'm saying, the Messianic Christians, the Messianic yeah, that's, Judaism, that sounds a, yeah. it was like I experienced something very similar to that in keeping the Sabbath or Shabbat, you know, and feeling like we were doing something that the Lord commanded us to do much like communion, you know, mm -hmm. as often as you meet, do this in remembrance of me, right? This is yeah. something sacred set apart as holy, just like the, the Sabbath, you know what I'm saying? Remember the Sabbath, it'll be an everlasting covenant forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always going to be, be there. So like doing something like that where it's more personal versus like an outward, you know, we don't get moved unless the pastor jumps on the, the uh pew and runs down and screams and shout like yes, like that's really exactly. what would turn turn a sermon for us was when the pastor yeah. jumped on the everybody yeah he's, he's, a, he's a right. radical man i was like this guy's a good he's a he's a showman you know what i'm saying yeah, and, uh, yeah it's and it, it comes down to that personality it's great that, that some preachers will have that personality and it stirs people up but it's just the personality that's the thing it, it's not necessarily god behind that personality or god within that personality that's doing those things um, yeah, I, I think that with along with the Judaism, the Messianic Judaism, which I really appreciate, um, I found there was an author who translated the Gospels into the the into Aramaic, the original language of of Christ, and he's more of a Sufi Lutheran pastor who's almost like a folk singer. He'll wear a fez. <laughs> it's not the coolest thing. But I went to a, 
a, a, a day seminar where he just all that was spoken were the seven pr- the the prayers of Jesus from the Gospel of John in Aramaic, and he 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 played them. We chanted them. We got in a circle and and speaking these these prayers out these Aramaic prayer, and I felt God. I, I was like, and and it was so out of character to feel God in a situation that was not a charismatic experience. But the words of Jesus were really honored. The guy's name is uh, Neil Douglas Klotz. Um, and he's written two or three books just translating the, the four gospels plus the gospel of Thomas. When you translate all five gospels, well, you know, the, the four synoptic, the, the synoptic and the gospel of John and the gospel of Thomas when you when you translate them from the Greek, it they don't match. They they don't seem to match at all. But when you put them in Aramaic, like ninety two percent of of the heart of the message comes through each gospel, including Thomas. So that uh, for me, that's just a it opened my mind up to God in a in a new way, and. <clears throat> caused me to still feel the presence of God and to seek after God, but not in a traditional charismatic yeah. way. You um, were still feeling that at the, at, 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 like at the Zen stuff too, though, right? Like in the, the meditations and the things that they would like mind. The Zen stuff, the, the Zen stuff, when there were, it, when I was living in the UK and there was a Brighton Buddhist center. And this is stuff that I would, I know that the, the, the taboo of going into a Buddhist temple or uh, even a room where there are Buddha statues. <laughs> you know, you're told th- these are demons and you're, you're worshiping the demons. We used to rebuke them when we'd go to the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> right, right, rebuke them. In right. Jesus' name, I bind and, the and devil right to this now. Day, <laughs> to the, yeah, to this day, my Christian friends are, are like very much, that, that, that's, that's a demon. And I'm like, okay, but I was in a situation in my life where there was chaos and to sit in a room and not be told anything with other people and just focus on the breath, focus on being mindful. That, that was a lifesaver because there's no requirement. There's no, you, yeah. you don't have to not be a Christian. You don't have to know anything. <clears throat> there, there's Secret no knowledge. Exactly. It's not like you have the to, angels. You, you don't have to take the steps. Have certain keys that you got. And in go the up the, state. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to um, sit uh, on all fours and, and roar into a wall or the ground. Put it that way. There's no requirement. Who, who you to, seen doing that versus? Uh, I'm not going to say. I'm just Toronto. Saying. Toronto. <laughs> no, it wasn't Toronto. I love Toronto. It's very simple. Yeah. But um, and, and I've always loved that the Toronto blessing. I, I had great. There's great fruit from that. But I'm talking about like the later charismatic mm-hmm. stuff that I attended. You know, it might be Jason Westerfield. It might be somebody else. Yeah. It, uh, you you had to do these things. The accurate, it's almost like yoga. But it was like these are the keys to to break through into God, and I'm like, I don't, I don't need to get break through to God. I, I've got God. I, Jesus oh, broke Jesus, through to God Jesus. for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like I had a dream about Jesus. How I got saved was I had a dream about Jesus, and it really changed my life. I, I've had that encounter with Him, but but to go through all these steps versus the Zen, which is Zazen, which is just sitting and listening. Uh, just getting past your mind, not so much shutting down your mind, but just go into the breath, giving your mind a break. And, and you know, most Zen teachers are like, you don't have to be Buddhist to do this. You don't have to be anything. You could be an atheist. You could be whatever you want to be. It just makes you a, a more mindful person, a calmer person. And I find that that helps. And I know, I know you said you've, you've been kind of out of the loop for a while, but I know you could probably see traces of it you know in in the past movements and stuff but a lot of what we're doing is looking to the east especially in in the christian movements now and we're taking you know breath work we're taking deep meditation we're taking chanting we're taking i mean so crystal chakras like we're taking this stuff and you know all this stuff and they're applying it now so like see i but that's i've only just found that through your through through your podcast yeah and people on facebook that that we had connected with mutually um, I loved the the thing about the Kundalini and the Holy Spirit and, and 
what's the difference and what makes them different? Are they different? Um, Cause everyone who watches the, you know, all the heresy hunters that are, yeah. they so say Kundalini. that the Todd Bentley's Kundalini. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I went to a Kundalini yoga practitioner, uh, a guru. And I said, Hey, what is Kundalini? Because all these people who watch my film say it's Kundalini. Yeah. And he was just kind of confused by it because um, it's not, this is a Kundalini experience, not necessarily flopping around. That's one aspect of it. But, but even he, the Kundalini instructor, had a experience with Christ. He, 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 somebody came up to him and prayed, Jesus, and he felt the presence of Jesus. I'm like, that's cool. I, for me, I, I, I met a, a, a really great mentor and friend uh, uh, called Steve Benitez, and, and you could see some interviews with Steve on my YouTube channel. He was an um, on-fire Pentecostal rising star in in uh, in in London in uh, Kensington Temple, the 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 next star preacher that was going to be, and he had a really bad experience with the church, which I won't go into as to why. But he left the church and went back, kept a, a relationship with Jesus, but went back into esoteric and and Buddhist uh, teachings. And for me, I, uh, working with Steve was like working with somebody who was so much like Jesus. So uh, it, uh, the kindness and the power and, and the authenticity really taught me that my world, my box of Christianity is too small. Um, Jesus is in the church, but he's also way outside the church. Yeah. There are people with experiences with Jesus that have nothing to do with the church. And their lives are healed or changed just because they had an encounter with Jesus. That's brilliant because it, it opens up <clears throat> it opens up your world when you find that Jesus that you don't own Jesus. He's bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> He's bigger than you. And I love to be able to incorporate all the energy stuff. But Steve taught me that, um, and I remember the conversation I had with him. I was like, Steve. Um, you know, I've had the a, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he's like, was that the Kundalini experience? I'm like, no, that's so demonic. How would you, how could you think that? But there is something to the similarity between a Kundalini experience and a Holy Spirit experience. And I always take it to be um, Holy Spirit descends and Kundalini rises. I don't, I don't know how to, you know, whether that I will believe that five years from now, or not, I, I still hold to that because I've had experiences that uh, in prayerful times and worshipful times, I've experienced this stuff. Um, and it's powerful, and it gives you the sense that, not necessarily that you are God, but you are in God so close, and your, your mission almost is to become like God, not in an arrogant way or a New Age way, but to be divinized, to be something where it's um, you know the the old Greek Orthodox Roman or uh, Greek Orthodox uh, uh, preachers that are still to this day they're buried but their their bodies are still fresh. Um, uh, the legends of the uh, Greek Orthodox priests that they would walk into a hospital room and just go like this, and people would just be healed and able to go home. But they believed something much more mystic and Eastern than, than we do. And we almost put it on other people to transmit that power, a Todd or a Sean Belts or, or Ian, when really it's not about that. It's about what you carry and what you can, you can grow. It in, takes, in it takes going through all of this for you to understand that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, go and see all the big people going to every – revival and go and see Benny Hinn and getting Benny Hinn to pray for you and getting all mm. the main people to pray for you. And you mm. go back and like, nothing's changed. You, you, know? you name it. I've, I've gotten prayer from them for it and, and interview them. <laughs> uh, and, and again, it just becomes, they are just people too. And, and <clears throat> when you realize that, then you realize what you, what they carry, you can carry. Yeah. And what, like I had an experience with some tea no, no drugs, no hallucinogenics, nothing weird that 
that literally brought me into a place where I saw the glory of God. I saw literally mist, the mist of God. I was drunk for four hours, um, but it was not, it was just somebody praying over a cup of tea restoration. Hmm. And I didn't know that the person did that. Wow. The, those kind of experiences, realize, you realize God's within you. God's the kingdom of heaven's here. That's Jason Westerfield. Well, maybe the best. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to hear some of the manifestations and then link them back to the person. No, oh, no, no. It wasn't Jason. It was I'm a very joking. personal one on one. I'm just saying that at that point, having that tea experience, I could have easily gone out. Hey, I've got this anointing. Let's do some tea together. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could yeah. take the tea thing on the road yeah. and, and yeah. it, it would be kind of, I'd be cynical about it, but there are others who are cynical about doing that kind of stuff. You don't need uh, those other people to, to get the anointing from, Yeah, you know, like Todd's impartation stuff. I, I want to, I, I mean, countless times, versus like one tea experience you know like how much do you need to go and how much do you does that the the system that's kind of unhealthy which I, I going to current day stuff it's it's a very unhealthy system to just prop up rock stars who want to have a healing ministry and they may have a healing ministry they may do that that's great but it's just it's the system itself that yeah. for me has to just collapse yeah. because i'm with you man and, and maybe with um coronavirus and things that are happening now people will start to realize they can't travel as much to these places well i mean <laughs> and, ex- and they can I mean, experience I mean, the God. whole i mean the whole bethel thing with the you know the the child or whatever you know yeah um that was big and people were like you know some, some close friends were like let's pray for the baby to be raised from the dead like i've got some friends that i met mm-hmm. and they did that like they yeah. lost the child and and kept and went and got the baby back from the morgue and kept the baby in the house and believed for mm-hmm. a miracle and a week later they had to come to terms like we gotta we gotta do something man i don't think it i think god raised i think god brought life in a different way you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. we have to change the way that we look at this this thing you know and there's a lot of people <laughs> When it be, when it becomes, it, it, it's like when it becomes it's a brand. A form, it's it's a form of what you talk about, like the, the form of psychosis, like you know, and it's in so many people yeah. from the deep <clears throat> mystical charismatic to the backwoods Baptist. Like everybody has a form of it through their religion, man, and and it can yeah. become dangerous as you you've experienced, or it can yeah. be something that benefits your life, you know, in a or positive temporarily. Way. Yeah, it could be good and bad, but but when when experiences become mostly bad. When it damages people's relationship with God, when it, when there there has to be a way people can see, and through this podcast is, and and others that I've seen too is like there are people who are able to kind of discern and grow out of a limited uh, experience into a greater experience of God. Yeah. But along that way, you are called uh, you are called deceived. You're called <laughs> a Satanist. You're called a Kundalini. Um, uh, deceiver, all these things, and it's not always the nicest um, to be on the receiving end of those things. Yeah. Um, well, hey, Jesus be... had it happen to him too. Yeah, so Jesus we're, we're did good, it uh, too. Good so company. there you go. Well, hey, man, I know we're at the top of the hour, bro. I know you got to go. Thanks for for making time to make this happen. And uh, dude, I can do another two or three hours with you. We gotta we gotta reschedule this and do it again, man. Yeah, I let's do it again. Going, we can talk about telling other stuff you these too. stories and because I know you get it. You were there, man. <laughs> no, and you man, can kinda... we could share. We could do one just on stories on, on from that time period. Or, um, let's do it. Yeah, let's do let's it. Go. I want to do it. Let's let's make it happen again, brother. Go ahead and, and plug your um your YouTube and your Facebook and stuff like that. People yeah, if you just about the people documentary. Google. Yeah, people just Google Roy Zoner. That's how that's my kind of moniker on uh, my name online. Um, so it's YouTube.com Roy Zoner. Um, my Instagram has some doodles and drawings. We didn't um, even get into that. that one <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. But that actually started through an Ian Clayton conference. So there is so <laughs> much good that happened from that. Sure. Uh, just downloading images and, and being able to draw them. In that's the a big thing ways. now, though. There's people yeah. who are like drawing prophetic images. Hey, what does this exactly. mean to you? <laughs> you <know? Yeah. laughs> but it's when they start charging. That's the thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. But yeah. So if you just Google Roy Zoner, RoyZoner.com, YouTube.com, RoyZoner, 
you'll see my stuff and it's it's a variety of stuff interviews with charismatic um and mystics and also zen people um people like buddhists who are practicing christians and christians that are practicing buddhists yeah. All variety of, of kind of you gotta listen to all you gotta listen to all of them, man, and then be able to make. I think after then you can make yeah, a, and then a, a, as a educated guess, at, you know, choose because yes. you've looked at it all, and this is what I'm sticking with. This is what exactly. works. Yeah. Hey, and I, I want to say, hey, man, thank you for not getting mad for using your your footage and not asking for permission. Oh no, 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 no. Because I tell you that, what, that, he, to me, that's that's awesome when somebody I know, does right? that. Right? To me too. Yeah. I, Ian got mad. Let me just say that. <sighs> Ian wanted money. All right. For oh. using your interview, yeah, he wanted that's, money for me that's using not a good your situation. interview. All right, well, <laughs> bless you, hey, bro. So, for real, let's hey, let's book this soon, man, because okay. I really want to go in deep deeper with you, man. That'd be good. Thanks for hanging out, Roy. All right, thanks, man. All right, many blessings, peace, peace. All right, you too. Bye. Roy Peterson, ladies and gentlemen, go check out his workout on YouTube. Roy Zoner, he's big into doodling and uh, bringing people together to draw to. Uh, to uh create together he's got a thing called doodle fest which is pretty cool i think his instagram is devoted to that there's even some stuff on on his his um um youtube but again this guy you know people who we call like greats in the charismatic movement he's interviewed them all before they were big maybe maybe if we get real mystical maybe they got big because he has an anointing on him that if he interviews you you blow up Hey, what if? Come on now. If we're just pulling the stuff out of our, out of the hat, you know, we create it as we speak it. Interview me, Roy. I want you to interview me, man. I want to blow up, bro. I'm telling you, he's, I mean, Todd Bentley, Jason Upton, which you talk about. I think Jason Upton's really uh, rounded. I think he's really uh, well-rounded and balanced when it comes to faith, doctrine, theology. And that, and that brother got it, got it hard. He's a, a beautiful prophetic worship leader. And uh, he, you know, all these depths of God, fly me to the heavens with you. You're my desire. All these really deep, beautiful songs. And um, he ended up, Jason Upton ended up putting out some song, some fun songs with their son talking about their dog. They made songs about their dog and things like that, having fun playing with the dog. And he sung them and, and the church blew up. They got mad. They got irate that he would uh, do songs like that. And he caught you know the brunt of it that's how how far out and how out there are uh, forms of psychosis or disillusion that some people can be in because like oh it's not spiritual then it's demonic your dog and you're using your talents to you know to not edify the body and to entertain and he's like you're you know what i'm saying this is how far out some people get so jason upton went through that so roy's interviewed him john crowder you know, with the token, the ghost and falling out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Bill Johnson from Bethel, who's the head pastor of Bethel Assembly, interviewed him. Sean Bowles and his prophetic ministry. Patricia King, Bobby Connor, Bob Jones, Ian Clayton, uh, Jonathan David Hessler. So many people. But check out his documentary. It's the Lakeland documentary. And he was there with a camera during the whole Todd Bentley thing and uh, and reported on it for everybody. So, um He's uh he, he's really good man. I really like what he brought to the table. And I wanted to again like have him on because I feel like someone who's talked to so so many people is more well-rounded. So I have I have friends who people accuse me of this. I'm, we're in the south, right? There's a certain group of people. We're in the Bible belt. There's certain things that are taboo. Um and if you don't talk to anybody else, if you don't if you haven't been around or anything like that, you're just in your box and it's us four and no more. And I've got friends down here who, I mean, they're, they're racist. They're, they're bigoted. They're, uh, they don't like gay people, like all of this kind of stuff. And uh, when you talk to them, it, it shows, it comes out, you know what I'm saying? But when you have gay friends, when you have friends of different faiths, friends who are Muslims, Buddhists, or, or atheists, or lack of spiritual new age friends, you start having a sense of compassion and just like, not, not that they're even dying or lost and going to hell, but like, hold on, these are regular people, man. These are people. And we have similar traits, like the pursuit of the human heart is, is all the same. We all bleed the same. And so um, when you talk to someone who 
you know, that, that's the whole thing about, you know, the, the West Coast. There's some of everybody. And people are just more open and more accepting of all types of beliefs and, and practices and stuff um, versus being in the South and in the Bible Belt. Like they're more accepting and open because they've dealt with that kind of stuff. And it's so weird to talk to people who are so bigoted and people accuse me of that and maybe there is you know areas in my life that i'm not as open or still stuck in my old upbringing or whatever the case is i don't know and the the fact that it matters you don't know until you meet new people until you get outside of your box and to that's when you know when you're able i knew when i was able to finally hang around a catholic and and not try to win them over to jesus you know if you know what i'm saying of just being some or, or you know having being able to hang around uh, people who are attracted to the same sex or whatever, like, and not think that it was a sin or not think that I have to convert them. If, if I don't, then they're going to die and go to hell. Like, e- even if I did believe that to not like, you know, make that not, not be able to see them as a person, man, you know what I'm saying? And so that's huge. And one thing about having a, a lot of friends or talking to a lot of people is you come to this, this understanding that, hey, the world is bigger than me. Again, Roy says, God is bigger than me. I think I thought I had it figured out, but God is way beyond what I thought. And that's the thing. I found that out to be like what God does. It's like once you put him in a box, he likes to destroy your box. You know, you t- when you say God can't or God won't, he's like, you want to bet? He can speak through anything he wants. And uh, and that's the thing. And you find out people who are more inclusive and, and you find out that God is inclusive. That's the beauty of it. That's why I wanted to talk to Roar because I know he's, ta- he's talked to so many people. The thing, again, I like in that to someone like uh, George Norrie from Coast to Coast AM, who I've listened to hours and hours and hours of his his interviews. Um, and, you know, he's just open. He lets people tell their story, speak their truth and glean from it. But and for me, I want to know what what George Nori uh, believes. So I like to listen to people interview George Nori so I can finally hear what he believes versus hearing about what all his guests believe kind of thing. Cause he's kind of made these, you know, what works for you? What, you know, and I, I actually listened to, to uh, an interview he did with Duncan Trussell, which was pretty interesting. George Nori and, and Duncan Trussell, if you guys get a chance to listen to that, but that one w- was really good. What the spotlight was on George Nori. But, uh, man, being more inclusive and talking to uh, people who believe differently than you. I talk and I I have friends or acquaintances who are across the spectrum, all across the the spectrum, man. So that's the the thing about it, like studying. I've been and studied all these different sects of Christianity, New Age, even and occultism and Satanism and Wicca and all of this stuff. So I feel like at this point in my life, I'm able to kind of glean from it all and see what works and what doesn't and pick what does. Trust me, if if Wicca worked, I would be a Wiccan. You know what I'm saying? If Satanism worked, I would be a Satanist. There's things about that stuff that that didn't work and is actually dangerous. There's stuff about different sects of of Christianity that doesn't work and is dangerous. We didn't really get a lot of uh, a chance to go into it a lot, but uh Roy, he's big on um speaking about psychosis and and him and his his wife at the time were, were dealing with psychosis and, 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 and essentially in, in these Christian cults where you can only listen to these people and the things that it, it changes the way that your mind works and the way that you think. And I really want to have him back on to really go a little bit deeper, man. It was cool to just kind of touch on a lot of different things, but to get him to go on here uh, and, and go a, a lot deeper. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to with him. People who are more open, man. Um, Lately I've been, um, getting a lot of messages because I've been open about my faith. Um, I've been, I've been open about my experiences and, uh, um, being a little bit more vocal about Jesus and, and my truth and what I've believed. And it's been for, you know, a couple of different things. I've been in the word a lot more lately for myself. I've talked about this and, you know, hearing things of maybe people in my community say stuff that's like, hold on, that's not, you know, so if I if I like put off a vibe or something that is something that 
I'm against and you think it's okay, I want to make sure that you you know that it comes out of my mouth. Like, hey, I don't even though we talk about it, even though we maybe explore people, uh, interview people who believe differently. I don't think that's okay. So I just want to make sure that a lot of that is known. So that right there will check you and just to kind of make sure that, you know, you w- what you're bringing to the table um and what you're known for is is truth at the end of the day. So, you know, I I, uh, I try to find common ground again with a lot of the people that I interview, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with them. Uh, and uh, so I just try to be open about that, man. And I think that uh, people are learning from that. I think that that's what, you know, draws people to listen to a show like this. And, um, you know, it's it's helping people. <clears throat> I'm definitely getting those inboxes and uh and and no and I can see the numbers going up for a, a particular reason but it's something different when I'm just like okay let's just be let's just get to the point let's get to it so I mean I try to always do that but just you know the the particular guest or whatever we're, we're talking about it really um I'm here to 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 kind of go into their world but at the same time try to bring them into mine a little bit it's kind of like give and take a little bit during the conversation and you guys are on that trip with me you know you're 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 making that that uh voyage so um I'm going to jump here to the uh, chat to see if we have any questions. I want to say thank you to Spirit Girl for the donation. Thank you so much for believing in the work and helping fund the vision. You you are awesome. Thanks so much. Um, If anybody has any questions, let me know in the chat and I'll try to uh, answer them right quick. Um, Let's see here. I don't have every answer, but Jesus has many. uh, That's what Gavin says. And he says it's not his dumb butt answers. You have in your life about stuff you don't know, but it's about asking questions. Yep. If you don't ask the questions, you'll never get the answers. So being in a, in a a place that allows and encourages you to ask questions, see what you'll find that uh, many of these churches and many of these, um, uh, small movements discourage you from asking questions. Or if you ask a question, a question, they shoot everything down or they label everything as demonic, especially in the Christian groups, everything's demonic to stay away from, you know, that was a, and I've been open about this, like even like doing a couple of interviews with Brandon Barthrop over the years and trying to build with him a, a little bit. Um, you know, when people would, would share stuff in his community that I did or other interviews that I've did, he would shoot it down and, you know, it's, say all kind of stuff to stay away and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, there's only, you know, there, there's no room for, for any other le- leaders for sure. You know, just, I, I'm the leader. Listen to me. This is what we do. And, and you know, that there, there's definitely some truth to that, right? You have an idea, you have a belief, you have a, a truth that you're trying to communicate even through your community. So somebody who comes in and teaches otherwise, like the right thing to do is to get them out. I mean, you know, that's what happened to me in the church and happens to all of you who get into the church and start talking about things that uh, is not agreed upon doctrine or questioning the a pastor or questioning the doctrine. Hey, I, the pastor said this, but the Bible says this. And, you know, you get a target on your back once you start questioning the leadership, even just just by default. So you see a lot of that in the fringe movements. And so that's kind of what I've experienced with with some of these leaders, man. Um, that's why it's so cool to be a part of a community and, and have uh, Christian leaders in my life and have Christian leaders who are my friends who who uh, appreciate what I bring to the table and how open I am to have conversations. And they they bless me and they encourage me and they're 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 proud to call me friend and brother. And so those people right there kind of take away the uh, excuse that you had that you're all alone and everyone's against you because that's not the case. You know, to find people that, that are in your corner uh, rooting for you and they're Christians and they're believers and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It changes your paradigm because you get into a form of psychosis, cause psychosis thinking that you you are the only one who's doing what you're doing. Nobody believes in you. Everybody's uh, falling or, or nobody gets it or whatever the case is. And people 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 are having very similar experiences to you. And you just need to find the others. Find the tribe, man. That's what you got to do. It could be hard takes years find them and hold them close man it's good stuff frederick says um <clears throat> uh judge the tree by its fruit and not simply by looking at the tree for sure and that's what you got to do irk says you heard jelly's new song creature yeah man it's a pretty good song talking about the monster under the bed and 
and that kind of thing. I heard that song. Yeah, my boy uh, Justin Influence. He's he's diehard Jelly Roll. He he made sure I heard it. But yeah, it's pretty good. The video is pretty dope too. Chris Calico in that song. But again, I want to talk about these um, retreats that we have coming up again. Uh, I've got my men's retreat. It is, um, let's see here, April uh, 18th. For those of you who want to be a part of that, April the 18th in Mobile, Alabama. That's a men's retreat. And then there is uh, the other one that we're, I'm a part of, uh, Gil's retreat that he has going on. That's in Orlando. Um, and so that's going to be coming up um, April the uh ninth through the 12th if those those of you who are in the area i know i got some people listening in orlando and in and, and, and the Kissimmee area or Kissimmee. i don't know they always say i pronounce that wrong but if you want to check that out that'll be shared on my facebook here shortly i'll share that out um as far as the um donations and the funds go for the homeless video project that we're wanting to do we're right at the halfway mark so already think thanks everybody for uh funding that and 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 you know what I'm saying wanting to see that video happen um I definitely don't have the budget and I just put it out there as a, a a dream project something I wanted to do but definitely could never just come up with that kind of money and so I put it out there and people are just responding and donating thanks thank you everybody who's 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 been given towards that and if you haven't and you want to give anything helps um you can go to truthseeker.com the link is there to give to that gofundme project and you can actually see the number that we're at right now i think we're right over 630 something bucks and so right at halfway so man that's quick just put it out there you know just a couple of days and it's already halfway so i thought it was going to be something that just sits on the back burner for months and maybe somebody would give, but people are like, yep, let's make it happen. Let's do it. And then people come out the woodwork donating. So if you want to see that video come to fruition sooner than later, make sure you give to that. Go check it out. It's going to be going for a good cause. I'm not keeping any of that money. That's all going towards uh, paying for that and the, and the cameraman and treating both of those uh, guys out to all that kind of stuff. So make sure you check it out. going to go glance at these comments again. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about, anything you want me to read. I'll try to read it right quick. If you want to add to the conversation, uh, let's see. Shelly says, we need to stop putting ministers and pastors up on pedestals. Knowing the word and having discernment is so important in our faith walk. I mean, the thing about that is like you, you put them on a pedestal because they do it for you. Like they, you don't have to do it. Like the pastor does it. Like, you know, you just believe what they tell you. You don't have to like get in the word for yourself and know the know the word or know God for yourself because the pastor knows God. You ain't got to pray for yourself. You get him to pray for you, you know, because he's anointed. He's closer to God and these weird pedestals that we have. And, and, and it gets into man worship. And I've been talking a lot about that and definitely not supposed to be be that way. So uh, kudos to that comment, Shelly. Um, Danny says, I'm glad I found you, brother. If it wasn't for you. I wouldn't have been able to share my story for people to be inspired. Yeah, man. I'm glad I found you, man. You're you're awesome. It's good uh, seeing you grow. And I, I still get a lot of um, feedback from our interview that we did um, talking about shadow beings, man. And I'm excited to see you every step you take, man, in the right direction, even in the wrong direction. I'm, I'm here for you, but I'm just I see you, man. I, just, I see you, uh, good things are coming. So you got to just, you, you got that creativity. Most of you do. We just got to execute, finish that book, you know, get it out there, get you back on for another interview. I'm, I know people would love to read it, man. Birth it, get it out there into the world. Excited for you. Um, man, thank you guys for hanging out with me. It's been a, a short show. We only had, uh, the guest on for like right at an hour. Again, I, we could have went, uh, two more hours for sure. Just say, talking about these uh, manifestations and um, and kooky uh, experiences, and the interesting thing was he wasn't really big on uh, people faking experiences. He never experienced that. There's a lot of that going on, you know. Um, he said he never seen it. Maybe he didn't get close enough, but he did, did say he had some maybe some character stuff that he saw right with uh, some of these ministers behind the scenes. But then when it was time, lights, camera, action, boom, they're, they're just, they do their thing. They get into character. They bring the presence. They they do what they do. Um, people are good at it. You get good at doing stuff uh, when, when you do it a lot. You get better and better and better at leading a crowd, leading the people, speaking, putting on a show. 
especially when you get to travel, like a lot of these ministers get to travel to different churches. And so you just kind of bring that same message with you because you know what moves people and you get to something and it doesn't work. You don't do it to the next crowd, the next audience. And you see that going on a lot. Um, man, if you guys want to be a part of the school of the mystics, we're doing that tonight, 7 PM central. Uh, make sure you, uh, check out my Patreon, patreon.com backslash truth seeker. You get access into that for $1. So we'll, we'll be getting into some, uh, some prayer, some meditation, probably open up the scriptures a little bit and, uh, some questions and answers and, and hanging out with like-minded people. Um, find your tribe and this is where we hang out. School of the Mystics every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central. Also, if you're not a part of our Discord community, make sure you click the link in the description. That's where we just hang out. We do life. We post memes and pray and listen to music together. There's voice chat. There's text chat. Get involved, man. You have a you have a place here. There's something for you to do. Um, you have something to bring to the table. You have something to offer. Find out what that is, man, and see where you can be used. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. We'll do it again. Love you guys. Peace, peace. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truth seeker.